Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. That's fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. This episode is brought to you by Google Pixel, the official fan phone of the NBA and WNBA. The new Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro are built different. How? Take the audio magic eraser tool that helps block out distracting crowd noise so your play-by-play commentary sounds crystal clear. The only phone engineered by Google brings out the audio you care about so your videos sound as crisp as they look. Learn more at googlestore.com forward slash Pixel NBA. Audio magic eraser requires Google Photos app. May not work on all audio elements. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations, Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry Bahamas. I don't know. The fans can yell and all that, but again, it's I'm looking at the like if the players, if he loses the locker room is right. what I'm keeping my eye on. Right. And I hadn't thought the first time the thought even crossed my mind was last, was night. last night, which is scary for these next couple of games. Back at it again with another episode of the Shades of Blue Soccer Show. We are the KC Soccer Journal. My name is Cody Bradley. Thad Bell, Robert Russert, David Greenwald are here. As you can see, because we're doing video, not sure how this is going to work, but we're doing it. So good for us. This episode is brought to you by Logan Legs. The calves are back and so can you. The hottest workout craze sweeping the nation will give you the legs of a Belgian god. It's a high-intensity workout where you just get repeatedly kicked for 90 minutes. Logan Legs. Indefinitely. Make sure you go subscribe, rate, and review to the KC Soccer Journal wherever you get your podcasts. Indefinitely. Indefinitely. Indubitably. <laughs> great, Did you great spell art. indefinitely for the listeners? I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Indefinitely is a real word. But, indefinitely. but this ad read is not spelled did that come off in my... I tried to portray it. I think so. Mm, definitely. Okay. Mm. You done good, Cody. You done good. So, to get us started here, I've got an absolutely phenomenal stat. I don't have a good stat. It was posted on Reddit from uh, Joe Bush, who was writing things for Score Secondary. He posts those MLS watch guides. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Uh, so, this is from Joe Bush here. Members of the 2011 Sporting KC team scored as many goals on Saturday as the entire Sporting Kansas City team has scored all season. What are we doing? Now, I'm check my calculations here, but 2011 was 12 years ago. Good math. You must have went to a decent school. That is just insane. Teal Bunbury, Kai Kamara, and CJ Sapong. All scored yesterday. It could just mean he has sneakers and toes. I don't know. Well, I don't have 12 of them. (laughs) Oh, and toes. Damn it. Okay. Sorry. There's other things. Um, (laughs) And you could imagine, though, if all three of them were on Sporting Kansas City right now, how much people would complain about how old they are. That's a valid point, I guess. We complain about how everybody's old, but then 
They're still kicking. What that's 2011 team. Good team. What a fun team that is. All three of those names were fun. Just to say again, goals change games. Doesn't matter how old you are. Just brings us back to the glory days. So, yes, the that stat obviously shows us things are not going well. And we have some audio from Johnny that I forgot where I put it. Um, that uh, just kind of embodies all of it. Johnny just sounds so insanely, insanely defeated here. What's the way back? I don't know how you fix it. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. We just don't look anything like the team that we were. I don't know. I, I, I genuinely don't know how to fix it. But it's up to us to show them, show them something. Um, I mean, right now, none of us deserve to be. We're on the jersey playing. We need to figure it out, um, and we need to figure it out fast, or this is going to, this is going to spiral out of control. Mm. Not great. Not great when the captain of the team doesn't know what's going wrong, doesn't have any ideas how to fix it. Not great. Not worthy of the badge. We're do- that's that's a sign of dark days. I've been in that locker room when there's been after big time losses, and I don't think I've ever seen them down as they were last night. You walk in and they were all slumped in chairs, like three or four of them even looking at phones. The rest of them just looking like they were shell shocked. Johnny had his uh, uh, chair torn towards the locker so he wasn't even looking out at anybody he was just like head down there until somebody finally tapped his shoulder to say hey you got to talk to us for a second yeah you could see it on the field after that second goal just the body language of the players they just looked defeated the cauldron was defeated well you could also see the team starting to get frustrated you know I thought the team actually played really well up until the first goal they were getting a lot of turnovers in the opposing you know, side of the field, they were, they were, had a lot of possession, but you could see that all of the possession was leading to nowhere. So every time we'd turn Montreal over and it didn't lead to a shot or it didn't lead to a goal, you could see that level of frustration building. And then once the goal got scored, it was like the air just got sucked out of the team and, and out of the stadium. Robert, you were there last night, right? And oh yeah, you guys sit near each other, don't you? Not last night, but yeah, typically. You didn't show up? <laughs> no. I I have three small children and uh, did not want to suffer through a game with them being in bad moods. I had I was at a crossroads before this game. I had a friend text me, say he was going alone. Can't let a friend go to a game alone. I really didn't want to go. I had other things to do. But I was like, you know what? Just make the right decision. Get out into the world. Go support the team. Be positive. Good things will happen. And it was just bad all around. We'll, we're going to talk about the cauldron a little bit later, but the cauldron was not a good experience. It was cold. The game was just a pure letdown entirely. And yes, what a terrible night, Robert. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we did do some good stuff early, but uh, the difference between us and Montreal, oh, they come in, they've won what two games, right? Um, they seem to play more freely. We seem to be just, you know, and it's been this way for a while. So programmed to do certain things. And then even when we did penetrate into Polito, for example, I think I, I have a count here. We watched the game this morning. He lost the ball six times when you know, you know he was in that position. Polito did? Yeah. Oof. Polito so, did not have a good game last night. No. No, he didn't. He hasn't had a really good game since, I don't know, what year was that? 2021. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he hasn't had a really good game, no. But it's still just one of those things like, you can see he has the quality, like the second the ball like sticks to his feet, it's almost like you can see he sh- is and should be better <laughs> than everyone else on the field. But where's Mostly, the where's the magic? Like we, we need some individual brilliance from him or just literally nothing's going to happen all year. Mostly you see that in training against the other sporting defenders. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys were all at the game, so you didn't watch, you didn't see the broadcast, although Robert, you went back and watched it. But they yeah. showed a stat last night that – like 46% of our attacks came down the right flank, 40 some odd percent came down the left flank. And it was like 3% uh, through the left channel and 3% through the right channel. And this has been a problem all year long. We attack through Daniel and Johnny 
and nobody plays centrally. Tommy drifts out wide left. Roger likes to combine wide right. Nobody goes down the middle of the field. And so we become very, very easy to defend against because we're also not flooding the box with runners. So when we hit crosses, there's one, maybe two guys to target. And a well-organized defense is going to have four guys back plus a keeper. Well, that's something they talked about at halftime, but why do you need to talk about that at halftime? It should be happening. There should be numbers in the box. Yeah. You know? yep. And then also another stat they had was 54% of our shots have been outside the box. And last night, again, was indicative of that. Shallow, we had a good drive from outside. Somebody else did too, but that's the best chances we had. And those are low percentage, besides, low XG shots. Yeah, besides the one back post to Johnny that he kind of missed. But yeah. Most that's of them are from outside the box because they aren't getting people in the box to get the pass. Right, exactly. So, I mean, that's, yeah, the, those things are, all, are related. These things are all related, yes, right. for sure. And even when you do have somebody that's tries to go towards the middle, it'll be like Tommy, he'll take the ball from wide, go to the middle, but then he doesn't take the shot or he doesn't cut in. He passes it to Johnny on the other side. I mean, it's... Yeah. Yeah, I notated a number of examples of when we get the ball and we don't even kind of look inside. We just program to play it out wide. Well, and the David, you were talking about attacking through the middle. It seems like some of the best chances that we've had over the last few games have come from that, but it's come when Polito drops way back into the midfield, in the center of the field, and then he plays the creator there. But then the problem is that it's like, the ball that he plays is to Roger Espinosa, who's running into the box because we have our our only creator is our striker, and then when he leaves the spot, then we're left with and it doesn't and then they don't even turn into the biggest chances because we don't have the guy we need there. But and and it's like again, that's what you want Polito to do. You want him to do those things to get involved. But, but you want somebody to be on the end of the passes he does make that. And, and I'll do love and respect to Roger, but that's not the goal scoring machine that we need coming out of the midfield. Right. Well, and you know, when we, when sporting was at their best, they had Benny playing as either a creative midfielder or as a late arriving runner in the box and Benny could score goals. And then it went from Benny into, you know, Felipe Gutierrez, who again could play centrally and kind of play, scored as like a late arriving midfielder. And even Busio was good at popping up in space in the box as the play has developed, we don't have anybody who does that right now. That's not Eric Tommy. It's not Roger. Not it's Eric not Tommy. It's not Remy. Well, it's not Remy when he's playing the six. Right. It, he and does re- do it when he's playing the eight, at least somewhat. Right. And and I think that's you know indicative of one of the problems this team has, which is we don't have a healthy six. And Remy's a, a competent six, but his not. It's probably not his best position. Um, he probably ought to be playing the eight. Depends on which year you talk to him. One year he says it's not. One year he says right. it is. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you if you were to tell me today to pick, if everybody was healthy and you were to tell me to pick our best midfield right now, it's probably got to be Gotti, Remy, and Radoya at the six, because what we've got right now is not working. Well, even when we do get the ball centrally, there's really no movement in the box either because I think they're just expecting it to go wide, and why make the effort anyway? <laughs> Right. And you, and you don't see Daniel or Johnny make like cutting runs in behind. Like, you know, you never see the ball move centrally. That's and what I see mean. Yeah. Johnny make like a clever, like bending run behind the center backs, the fullbacks where you can play a through ball to him. He's just out wide and you play it to him. And then he tries to go one V one or one V two and he loses the ball or Daniel will take it out wide and either cross it or, you know, pass it back. But nobody's making those darting runs in behind. And that's one of the things that made Willie got uh, Willie Agata so good last year was Willie did have really clever movement and just constantly was making hard, like darting runs. Yeah. You can see Kinda brings that and he enables other players to do that, but you know, it's going to mean he's going to have to be integrated and that's going to take a little while. But the other thing is, is, you know, let's compare it to Tuesday night. Okay. We're playing a division four squad and, you know, Ethan Bryant got all this praise, but, the Division Four squad we're playing isn't playing the kind of defense that MLS teams play against us, which makes it much more difficult to do the things we're talking about. But, you know, there's got to be effort. There's got to be creativity. It's got to be ramped up when those things happen. Gotti Kinda made his MLS debut. Is he going to fix the season? Bad. Too late. <laughs> there's so much riding on that knee. 
Oh man. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm going to repeat that I've been saying for the last year, I don't have any faith that either one of them will be back to their best selves this year. Gotti or Allen. Yes, we know you want him to do bad so you can be right. <laughs> no, I want them to do good because I root for this team, but I've been the the I guess the voice of doom in that regard at least. <laughs> he did look he did have some nice turns. Yeah. Like oh he, yeah. You know, had some some of those like very classic gaudy driving runs, just maybe a mile or two slower than normal. But it was nice to see him back. Well, I think part of the issue is this is both him and Polito are being put into a situation where They've been playing for a year and a half, and they come into the situation where everybody is just so flat and just down about the whole system, and it's not working, and they're supposed to be coming into the system and making a, a difference, and it's difficult to do that. It is. Yeah. Of course, last year, Tommy and, and Willie came into that same scenario, essentially, and they did make a huge difference, but it was them coming in fresh at where right. Alan and Gotti are, again, probably not gonna, at them – at their best, and they've been in the midst of all the the downness, the depression, the sadness, the right. fecklessness, the fucking sad, dismal, <laughs> lug- lugubrious, lugubrious, lugubriousness. You worked it back in there, didn't you? But you know, before we take a giant dump on the defense, uh, I did think that we had some really, really beautiful combination play early in the game, um, like the first 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, Logan and Daniel had some nice combination play. Jake and uh, Johnny had some nice combination play and maybe Roger um, playing one touch passes, being able to play people in behind. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised with like how nice this the soccer, the football looked and then the wheels kind of fell off. Well, even the commentator said out loud, no one's in the box. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, when you have those buildups, great, but no one's there to take advantage of it. I actually liked the color commentary last night, except for the play by play who could not pronounce volatile. Properly. Was he British? Did I hear a British guy while walking to the bathroom yes. in the car? Yes, former Red Bull. Yes. Is it Sam Lloyd? Lloyd Sam, what's his name? Yes. Sam Lloyd, right? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, One of those. If For those of you, if, if we post a video here, Thad, I'd, we're all in the same place right now. And look at the difference in the wall color <laughs> between me and Thad. Well, that's lighting. It's called we the are, sunshine. We're in the yes. same room two inches from each other. Uh, oh, no, more than two inches. <laughs> that's yeah. more than two inches. More than two inches. Robert and I are in totally different locations. From exactly, yeah. But we Robert are together. Both of the stadium. We, we've been here all night. We yeah, yeah. So we get the access and that nobody stop else and <laughs> Robert's in the press box is where that angle is. Mm-hmm. And I'm hanging out with... Uh, David's President a, CEO Jake Reed. A legendary day in sporting history there with Jake Reed. Who hasn't moved at all, and maybe that's symbolic of the lack of movement by the front office. So anyway. we're working on it. We like to take the audience <laughs> with us here, so we could, ju- we could just talk about this on air. We're trying to figure out the best way to do this. We don't have a good location with good backgrounds for any of us to do this in person, but so we're trying this. We're, we're all together, but in order to get us all on the screen, we've just done individual laptops here around the table. We're not sure if it's how it's going to work. But we're, video stuff is coming. You see, we're working on this. Cody, you just need to dive in with the video and just do it. The toughest part's getting started, man. I've Come done on. it, but I just don't want to put out bad content. I don't want to put out content where Thad's, half of Thad's face is on the screen. we not got to make sure we get it I'm right. I'm on this damn screen, man. What the hell are you talking about? That's well, it's because we're getting, we're getting there. We're doing better. David. When I was half on the screen <laughs> was when we weren't doing video. It was just Zoom. So what did you need to see except my eyes? Well, I just, I wasn't sure. And my it. hair, because you liked my hair so you much. You do have pretty blue eyes. We need to highlight your eyes on here better, <laughs> on the Shades of Blue soccer <laughs> show. Uh, so okay. speaking of crapping on the defense, what? Uh, Man, you know, they mentioned on the broadcast last night that it's tough to play good defense when you're constantly rotating pieces in and out Mm -hmm. and that they don't have solid partnerships because it's Castellanos and Volitor or it's Volitor and Fontes or it's Castellanos and Fontes. And then, okay, can I have a moment? Can I have a moment here? Oh, take all the Can we go back and go back to my defending of Izamat Marin? Can you all Ah, see now? How it wasn't his fault all the time because he's surrounded by crap. Can you all see that now? Please. Hey, but he was also please. crap. But he was also crap. Oh, he's a better player than Rosero is. Yeah. 
Oh, Izzy's a higher class. I was, I was I ever an Izzy hater? I feel like I, I don't was, know. I feel like I, I was know. a supporter. I wasn't an Izzy hater. Or I just felt that the, he had some lack, and I and <laughs> well, again, perfect. But no. it was either keep him or Fontas. It <laughs> wow. was one or the other. Not isn't both. That it so should have ins- been neither. Isn't that so insane to think like <laughs> not long ago we made a decision because we had too many center backs, like we couldn't keep both of them. Right. Well. We well, no, it wasn't have. that we had too many. It was that we had too many at too high of a price that weren't that great together. Well, that's another story, isn't it? I'm that's, working on that, too. That's a different issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, As Matt Doyle has so nicely brought up repeatedly over the last couple of weeks, that we haven't brought in a useful center back since Ike. Okay, so Peter Oof. says, well, Fontes was, what, a finalist for Defender of the Year? And then Peter said, you know, One if Izzy year. hadn't gotten hurt, he would have been a finalist for Defender of the Year, too. So is this uh, for me lack of identifying talent is that yes okay well, well I mean, Fontes was a I know. finalist so i, I know mean, i know Fontes had one good year he's had one because and how many years has he been with the club five and of that what Some made of him, those were hurt though right yeah well that's a problem but what made him defender of the year it was Such not a the theme quality there. of his defense it's that he led the league in goals his defense him. was adequate it was fine it was that he was a great passer that's what made him right. defender of the year not that he right. could keep balls out of the back of the net right. he just helped us score goals i don't know where i got yeah. such a, a soft spot for him but i just he's a nice guy he is a great and guy. why but he's it's cool. not even just that it's like in my head i know that he is is better than what we have seen sometimes it just seems like is it the barcelona b pedigree i guess it just seems like in my head you know, he is very good, and just some things have not worked out. You know, he got capped like for the speed of his legs. Barcelona, Barcelona, <laughs> right? right. He's, he's very fast, right? Well, I know, but I, it's not, it doesn't feel right to like call him a. He played in the Champions League yeah. for Barcelona. I know, but what like a match one one appearance? I think is what it was. Is that I saw him play match? on TV? So <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it's a Wayne's World reference. But I don't even own a gun. <laughs> but you know we. Last night, new center back pairing, new right back, um, and Denbay's. It was his what second match of the season, third match. Cavs of the season. are back. It's so can you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you happen to see the Ted Lasso episode where Pep was uh, featured? I did. Okay, you're a Pep fan, so I thought I'd mention that. Was he in it? He didn't have like a. They showed a screenshot of him. Right. Yeah. Right. Because they were yeah. talking about total football. Mm-hmm. There Ted Lasso is doing well right now. Those last two episodes have been very good. I'm not no we don't do spoilers, but yeah, they those did have okay been on the soccer end of it. But yeah, but it also it made me laugh because the concept of total football it it reminds me of almost like a half-assed version of what Vermees wants. Or well, what Vermees wants is a half-ass version of total football, rather. <laughs> okay, I'm which glad is, you corrected that. Which is that like that he wants he wants players to be able to play multiple positions. So Cam Duke, who's a midfielder, plays right back, and that's the concept of total football, which is that everybody can play is every position and is? rotate and cover for each other. Yeah. <laughs> but like we don't go all in on that. We just take one guy and say instead of playing your normal position, you're going to train a little bit at this other position, and then we're going to play you there because we're not going to adequately stock the squad with players who can actually play that position. I just love the writer that came up with the idea that Ted Lasso, thinking he was tripping on mushrooms or some psychedelic, but really just ate some really good Arthur Bryant's barbecue and had a holistic experience. Sauce, just the sauce. <laughs> it was the sauce. Right, just the sauce. And then invented, <laughs> again, 40 years after, 50 years after it had been invented once, he again invented total football. By watching basketball. By watching <laughs> basketball highlights. That's so good. It's it's funnier when you say it out loud. The writing yeah, no. is funny. So I, I the next day after that show, that, that episode was released, a photographer friend of mine called me and said, Hey, did you watch that episode? I'm like, yeah. He goes, do you think that could work for sporting? <laughs> I said, no. I said, you, you know, they kind of do that already. The whole triangle thing, they do They do understand triangles. I mean, <laughs> we teach U10 players that nowadays. That's not something actually new anymore. Oh, okay. I, I don't think we do a good job playing with triangles. The spacing is oftentimes off. I'm not saying they do a good job of it, but when they are at their best, they were. Okay, so yes, when they were at their best... Uh, Zeus would drive to the end line. 
Johnny would drop into the midfield. Roger would drop it right back. You know, those kind of things to cover for each other when that was needed. It wasn't where they were normally at, but they would rotate and do that stuff. And they, they had some good triangles. Right now, they suck at everything. Not just triangles. They suck at straight lines. And speaking of sucking, I sucked at geometry. What's a five-sided figure called? Pentagon? I don't know. But anyway, that's what we have on the left side of our midfield. Until we figure that out, ain't nothing going to happen for this team. That's a cluster of dots. <laughs> it's a dust ball. Yeah, exactly. it's, uh, it's words I probably shouldn't use on pods. I mean, uh, if Gotti Kid is going to benefit from, or we're going to benefit from him back in the lineup, Tommy needs to sit. And maybe even... Or play the false nine, or right, maybe play the, the left nine. wing, right. or... Uh, I don't know about the left wing. I'd, I'd like to digress for just a moment. Fontes has two appearances in the Champions League for Barcelona, including one goal, and... One appearance in the Club World Cup, so oh, so you're in a, you're a Fonte fan stand now too. Good job. No, that's he's what I, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> he's terrible. That's what stand. I'm hearing here. I like it. But stand. actually, going back to what you were saying when he was the Defender of the Year finalist, and it was only because he was creating opportun- goal opportunities, uh, whatever that actual stat was. But goals added. Goals added. Okay, then that's definite progress because right now they could use some goals added. <laughs> well, but that but hey, that was he my reads idea. the game well. He reads the game well, but he just can't react. This is why in the offseason I didn't want to re-sign him, was that since that year when he led the league in goals added, he has not been able to replicate that, and it's gone down every year. He's not even in the top like 50 or 75 in the league because goals added doesn't require you to score goals necessarily. It needs you to be able to essentially contribute to the XG, but he's not making good passes anymore. Like a lot well, of his passes the, have the, been There's a wayward. terrible XG because nobody's actually trying to take shots when they should. We lead the league in shots, don't we? But they're all but not when the box. they should. But they're all bad. Yeah, they're all bad. <laughs> uh, so segment one has gone a little long here. So we're gonna, we Shock. can take a break and move on. But, Let's do a couple ads. But I want, <laughs> yeah, we got to fit in some ads here. Uh, at sitting in the cauldron last night, we were we were talking about the style of play a second ago, bringing it back to that, and Was not I? not smoothly in any way. But I'm trying to bring it back to that. Total total football <laughs> in the cauldron. Let's go. Um, I, I was watching the sprinklers go off heavily before the game and at halftime. And long ago, because we've been doing this pod a long time now, long ago we used to talk about, I think, how that was part of it. We used to play this high-flying left back and right back is all the way up the field, just high-flying, high pace, balls over the top kind of game, and they would intentionally wet the field yes. to facilitate that style of play. But we don't play like that anymore. Do they? It seems that they still wet the field in the same way. Are and you then, talking about the grounds crew, or is this a metaphor? <laughs> this is not. Does it work as a metaphor? I'll claim it if it works as a metaphor, but I can't think of. <laughs> I just can't tell how no, literal you're real. being. I'm being very literal. Oh, okay. They used to make sure the field was slick for 90 minutes, so the ball would run quick, and we could outrun people, and Chance Myers could bomb it down the sideline. And Teal Bunbury and Kai Kamara and. Those those speed guys, yeah. Two and Graham Zuzzi references, Boomberg. Uh But yeah, we don't play like that anymore. But I still think the field. I think I still think we do that, and our, we have a slow team. So why are we doing this, well, Cody? You may have heard the saying that oil is thicker than water. So maybe what we need is oil. So we're just slipping around all over the field, and we have to improvise our attack instead of you know being so scripted. So maybe that's what we need is put oil all over the field. Yes. Solutions. <laughs> you listen to this show. To get solutions for what's wrong with sporting, and and that would kill the turf, and then they would <laughs> have to replenish it and resod it. Hey, I just even want more improvisation. Money. I don't want scripted. I'm just thinking of Dwyer because Dwyer used to douse himself in the sprinklers before every match, and now I could just see him with like a big jug of olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> That's so he could look good with his little tight jersey. That's right. Three sizes too small, like Taylor Twelman. <laughs> That's right. We'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again. 
And that wind chill is killer. But you're not worried about that because you shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection. It's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside. No snow or chilly temps can stop you now. Go out anyway. Shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection now at Columbia.com slash infinity. All right, we're back. I have a top five list for you guys. Is it the top five things you're going to cut <laughs> of all the things I recording. said during that break? <laughs> <laughs> David's trying to make my life difficult over here. I've got a lot of hats. I'm a, I'm a director of our video show now, producer, host. I think he's succeeding. It's not trying to make it difficult. He's making it difficult. He's making it very difficult. And I'm know just that laughing because it's usually me doing it to you. I have a top five list, and I think it's – I thought I missed my window on this after uh, – the Ben Sweat removal, Oop. but now it now it's back because because so it's top five jettisons from Sporting KC, and it's I think it works again now because the fans would like to jettison Peter Vermees. So uh. these are these are jettisons from the team, notable <laughs> exits, loud exits from the team. Okay, loud, loud exits. Does that make sense? Is Jose Mauri a free space? <laughs> you can't, you can't do that when I have Bingo. a list. You can't. Come on, you're gonna ruin it here. I, okay, outside the lines, late addition here that I thought of while we were recording. Voinovic almost forgot him entirely. Is an outside the lines looking in. Yeah. All right, Cody. With no further ado. Uh, well, I have more. I have more OLIs. Oh, all right. Alexi Law. I'm, I'm putting Alexi Lawless on here. It was his choice to leave, Thank but God. he 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 came here for a year. Everyone knew he was mad, didn't want to be here. He retired, and then the, that year is when the Wizards won it all, and then he came out of retirement to join the Galaxy because, of course, he did. And I put him on this list for this one guy. I just wanted to say this. There was a guy, I think we played the Galaxy like the first game the next season after winning when Alexi was there in Kansas City. There was a guy on the broadcast that held up a sign that said, we couldn't have done it with you, Alexi. <laughs> 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 so good. Uh, final OLI, Matt Beesler. I'm calling it a jettison. It, doesn't nece- it wasn't necessarily a jettison in the way. It doesn't fit the game I'm playing here necessarily. But to him, if you listen to the interview that we did, that, that Thad and Robert did with him, uh, he maybe feels like he was jettisoned yeah. a little bit. He probably feels it, but I wouldn't call it a jettison to me. Jettison's like, oh, get the L out, get the F out of here. It was basically like loyalty until it was very loyal until one day it wasn't. Right. So the L got jettison. out of here. Yeah. The loyalty. Okay. So now I'm on to my actual top five list here. Uh, number five, Sunni Saad. Boom. How is that a jettison? I choose to believe rumors and that the world is fun and magical. <laughs> okay. Sunni Saad, it's my list. You don't like it? Make your own list. I never wanted him back. Number four, Johan Quaze. Boom. Yeah. Not for the reasons everybody thinks, but yeah. What a vibe Johan Quaze was. Uh, I like When you release in September he, of a season, there's an issue. That's what I'm saying. He was it's a, a nice guy. It's a jettison because it was mid-season. He was, I think he needed uh, mental health help. Yes. And I just mean in a, a depressed, sad kind of way, but maybe that's just that sad European hip vibe. I don't know. There was around the time, correlation is up for debate, but around the time of his removal, there was a, a bit of a scuff in training with Gideon Zalalem, who was also an OLI here that I could that I probably he, could he, have mentioned. He's It had nothing to do with it, man. I would... S- Lay money on it. Okay, well, it's my list. You make your own list. Because I've seen multiple people get in scuffles out there, and I regret ever mentioning this because I was the only one ever said it. Too. And everybody like, oh, they that's why they got rid of him. That's not why. Right, but I think I was I was at a training session when someone for the team also cited that in a conversation. Didn't say that it was a reason why, but it was it was not irrelevant. Yeah. Can I, can I just mention? I want next week's pod, I want Thad, I would like for you to come up with a list of top five uh, 
training session scuffle warriors oh. <laughs> from most dangerous oh. to least dangerous. That is a good list. You come up with, well, I'm going to come up with my own list. Oh. We're going to do five top five lists that game for that episode. <laughs> okay. I'll try. Okay. Number three, Emiliano Amor. Boom. Yeah. There was at least one very bad game. Houston. Right. Oh, and it was an open cup. Mm-hmm. And Vermees was like quoted after the game. He used the word very like five times to describe how far away some players would find themselves from the roster. They will be very, 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 very far from here. <laughs> and then and then Amor was never there was, was never seen there was again. no love for Emiliano after that. Number two, Ben Sweat. Boom. The inspiration behind the list. So glorious. Ugly du- uh, an ugly red card and Never seen again. You Sweat imagine, be gone. You imagine how poorly or how badly, sorry, he wanted to score against us last uh, game. Jettison, absolutely jettisoned. Number one, Peter Vermees Jettison from Sporting Kansas City, Jose Mauri. Boom. Less exciting because David ruined it earlier. You can't do that when I'm doing a <laughs> it's top a five free list. Space. Come on. That's not even got the best one. Who am I? Okay, you're. It's my list. It's I know the best what Thad's one. gonna say. It's my favorite one. Who am I gonna say? Who 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 who's he your? He might be um, a Marinelli. Yep, the ugliest man in football, <laughs> according to some lists back then. He was on the top twenty ugliest footballers in the world. That was a wizard. <laughs> that's a wizard's list. Carlos Boom. Marinelli. Boom, Argentine. He actually tried to fight the coach. That's a training ground fight that does get you banned. Where does he rank on your list of? Top five most dangerous players in <laughs> training ground fights. See, I love this. I, I love, I, I want to do more ridiculous to, top five lists. I will have to compile that list and let you know where he would fit into that. It's but, already inspiring so many others. I have another one. That was the most serious, like, somebody really, like, I knew that that was, a, that was an end moment. So right the there. intent was fully there. Yeah. Okay. There, there's there been some scuffles between players that, yeah, I, I mean, they wanted to hit each other, and they did, but... Yeah. For the most part, they had, they were friends, but just who, not in that moment. Who was the Kiwi center back that we had a couple of years ago on loan from West Ham? What was his name? Uh, Reed. Winston Reed. Winston yeah. Reed? Winston oh, Reed. wow. Probably my number one for guys God I would not him. want to get into a fist fight with. <laughs> He's a big dude. Yeah. He was a Good large list. man. Also a better center back. Than so you guys have all these ideas for your top five have. list, but then you're just previewing them. You can't. You got to make the top five list. Okay. Well, we'll filibuster well, well, while I, you do it. I so I have beef with your list though. Because in what way is Kevin Ellis not on it? Ke- he was there was a, he He's was not even an honorable mention. He wasn't OLI. He was on he was on the list. He's OLI OLI. Kevin Oliveira. This segment's taking too long. Oliveira <laughs> was was SKC two. Nope. He got called up to the first team. Yeah. Damn it. And his his agent would come on our site. Oliveira is such and a good complain. One. That's such and a good shout. Do you for not this. remember that? Yeah. You don't read the site. Yeah. I yes. By the way, the Kansas City Soccer Journal dot com, please. Yes, Oliveira's <laughs> agent was all up in our comments, just doing things that an agent would was, never do and probably awesome. shouldn't ever do. It was awesome. But oh, that's a good jettison. Tyler that's Freeman, Grayson Barber. See, you, you're just you should have been like, no, I have my own time. Your five. bitterness is showing. I would have, we would have <laughs> filibustered <laughs> while you made it. I'm making could, it right now. We could have come back to you. I, we can do the fanfare with the boom, the Jimmy booms. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it right now. Okay, but I didn't hear an order. What's your what? What we had five. What's number five? Barber, boom. Four. Freeman, boom. Three. Is he gonna make it to one? <laughs> can I can I borrow from your list or this after? Yeah. Completely no, yeah, you can. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Quase. Boom. That that disagrees with that one. He was higher. He had him higher than I did. Kevin Oliveira's two. Boom. And number Honestly, one, I think Kevin Oliveira should be two and one because of his agent, <laughs> <laughs> not because of his contributions. That's to the cheating, team, but just because <laughs> major cheating. It's because I'm hoping that the guy listens to this podcast and comes after us again. <laughs> That's uh, what good agents do. But did you overlook Kevin also? No. So yeah, and then Kevin wasn't even in yours. After he so complained, that he wasn't on Kevin Cody's. Ellis. Are you talking about yeah. Ellis? Ellis is number one, and and <laughs> I. Uh, Thad, I'm not going to bring up the rumor. Boom. I'm not going to. I'm not going to speak it, of it, but I like it. I, I want it to be true. Yeah, well, we had Kevin a great Ellis rumor. I don't think that one's true. Then he went I on to a great so career with the comments. So you know, that's he was just not a. He people just didn't like it. What training ground fights? Is he on your list? He people just didn't like Kevin Ellis. Uh, I will say I almost saw him get into a fight at the comments with a 
fan. Guy who fan. might be a national team coach now. Hmm. Nice. We're talking nice. about Kevin Ellis? <laughs> oh, nice. man. Okay, oh, moving on. See, wow. you got to have fun. That bothered Robert. Robert never let, wants me Bad. to have fun on the show. You need to write but, a book. But we're going to go back to Peter Vermees' comments here. I want to talk about, so everyone wants change. And there are, you know, we're, we're considered uh, apologists and optimists oftentimes around here. I, d- I disagree Only because you keep sentiment. saying that. <laughs> but uh, Who says that? Everyone online. People that don't listen to podcasts because we're too positive. Um, so there are there are some things that are just undeniable, glaring issues that if even those in the club, those making the decisions in the club, have to just understand these issues and a change is needed. And so we're going to talk about some of these. But uh, let's talk about in in during the game last night for the first time, the cauldron was audibly, openly chanting Vermees out and a, hey, Vermees, it's all your fault. There's a Vermees sign, as Robert is doing. His background is not working well at all here, but that, that was good well, The less you see of me, the better. It was, so. it was all the effort that counts there, Robert. So <laughs> let's listen to this audio from Peter Vermees here. The crowd was chanting Vermees out at one point after the second goal. Did you hear that, and how do you respond to that? I, I didn't. Um I don't necessarily listen to much goes on. Um, how do I respond? That's that's not it's not for me to make that decision. It's unfortunate, but is what it is. Chad really let him off the hook there with the "Did you hear it?" Because I don't think if I think if Chad doesn't say "Did you hear it?" right, then I think he has to just respond to. He can't say "Nah, I didn't hear that." That may be true, but it's hard to ask those questions like it that. Is. It's it is. Kudos to Chad for doing it. Yeah, yeah. I was. Actually going to try to get in there to say something, but I got there a little bit late because they didn't do the Montreal coach. And then Maurer from right, is that his name? Yeah, from the Pablo athletic, Maurer. he also he also got in there with a little bit of that as well. Uh, so Robert, what are some of these glaring, undeniable? Are we doing another top five list? Do you have one? I've got top five. I've got it. Wow. All right, we're, we're going to start here, guys. Really hammering the top fives hard. That's a good bit. Are we going to have five of them? We're going to destroy the top five bit in one episode by doing <laughs> right. too much. All right. I'm firm believer that past is prologue. Okay? We're human beings. Past is prologue. 12, 27, and 10 since the last three of 2021, including the playoffs in 2021. So these trends have not just been this season. It's been going on for a while. Say that, 12, say that record again, yeah. 12 wins, 27 losses, and 10 draws. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Should have a toilet flush. You said that. <laughs> yeah, that would have been better. You said that in the Slack earlier, and it just, I didn't even read it as a, as a record. It's such a bad record. I was reading it as a date, and it didn't make sense to me. This date in history, we sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... What is your? Did you give us a top five? What is your top? That, that's that's number five. That stat. Well, what is this top five? What's the game we're playing here? Top five reasons why change is necessary. And number five is the record since twenty. End of twenty twenty one. Yes, sir. Boom. Okay, now number four. It's number four because you know it matters, but it's not critical. But it matters. Fans are fed up. Boom. Fans are very fed up. Okay, number three, moving on rather quickly here. All right, so if this team is going to get any better, uh, there's got to be a roster and a tactical overhaul. And I think it's pretty clear that Brian Bliss and, at this point, Peter Vermees, after being here for 15 years, are not the ones to orchestrate that roster and tactical overhaul. Boom. I think that David, you're nodding your head. I agree. I concur. It was a little long for a top five list edition, but I guess out Greenwald. I think I used boom at the right spot. <laughs> okay, number three. Uh, this would be number two. Number two. Number two. Whoops. Okay, uh, if um, Vermees is still in charge, significant signings will not come here. Boom. Because of that past. Mm, I don't know if I agree with that one. Hmm. Money talks. Yeah. Overpaying. Lack of money talks also. <laughs> We'd have to overpay to compensate. Okay. All right. Mm, and then uh, last but not least, to gain a fresh perspective, the players need a leader with a fresh perspective. Boom. That is, yeah, I mean, that's the reason I would be Vermees out curious right now is just 
It's as simple as that. If you're you, Vermees out curious. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Why? Because is it like, because it's lame. I'm not Vermees out right now. Are you staunchly Vermees out? I believe I said at the last pod, they needed to win two games. They did. They win those two games. <laughs> no, they did not. And guys, it ain't going to get any easier. And, Next five games, uh, we have at Seattle, then Open Cup uh, at Houston, home to Minnesota, at LAFC, at St. Louis. Things ain't getting better anytime soon. I I hate to, like, jump on, like, saying, you know, I'm, I'm for me is out and anything because I try to be objective as possible, but I think they need a change, and I think that's the easiest change that could be made in a short period of time is changing a coach. Right. And if they don't make some kind of change, the season is completely gone. And I know people will say it's completely gone now. There's still chances to make playoffs, and who knows what can happen with that kind of stuff. But if you're not going to make a change now, then you're going to have to wait for a while and just have things get more festering and more depression and lose fans. Ownership, I believe, will do something soon. But I think they do have to do something soon, even if they aren't planning on it just to make that statement that we are not acceptable of this. Vermees deserved a very long leash, very, very long because of everything he's done for this team. But at this point, that leash has to either be cut or so dang short that it's, I don't know yeah. what. Well, and then that's, it's an interesting question because it's when did the, like, yes, he deserves a long leash, but like, when did the leash begin exactly? Cause you know, the fans were put him on the leash, like, just when last year was not going well, right, very from the start. But, like, yeah. who, who, whoever is making this decision, did, you know, did they start giving him a long leash last week because they've given him a pass for all of the injuries or they were not blaming the all this other stuff on him? You know what I mean? It's just, like, yes, how long of a leash does he get? But, like, when did whoever's making this decision decide like, all right, this is on him. He needs to change. You know what I mean? I, I don't know a, a simple, easy answer to that because I've heard Vermees out since 2010. Quite, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. there's been people who have hated him since then and they would take every opportunity if they lost two games in a row to say Vermees out. So it, I don't credit every single time I hear it or even like that, but there it is built to a preponderance of people wanting it. It's not just a vocal minority doing it. It's not just five guys on Reddit or three guys on Facebook doing it or whatever. Yeah. It is a preponderance of fans that now want to change. And again, the simplest, easiest, fastest change to make that can affect a team is the coach. I still think Vermees is a good coach, can be a good coach. And I don't, you know, I, I think maybe he needs to make some change too, but I don't know any other answer that can help the team right now because you're not going to make a major signing in the next two days. Bringing in the college draft pick, Afrifa is not going to probably make a huge change unless he comes in and starts going scoring goals like Willie Agata did. But then again, that would require getting service in the box. Robert, go ahead. Well, I, I totally agree that Peter is going to find success if he goes somewhere else. He's a good coach. He knows, you know, he, he does good things. But just, just so much is going on here that's been done. I don't see him as the one to get us out of it. But um, like we said last week, the sooner a change is made, the sooner change can be affected for next season. The longer they wait, next season could be a waste as well as that coach gets his new system in, gets his players in. So Yeah, and even if Peter was the guy who could make the change and get everything done, it wouldn't be this year just because you would right. have to change over a, a huge number of players probably, Yeah, which would be perhaps good. I mean, there's, I can't point to one old player and say they don't deserve to be on the roster, but when you can point to five old players or however many we want to point to, whatever age cutoff we want to point to, that's also an issue. But if the players change, here's the other question, will the tactics change? Which arguably they don't need to change if you get the right players, but right. Well, it, yeah. Vermees is in that, in that position because he's both the sporting director and yeah. coach so that, he gets to pick the players for his system. If he, do I think Vermees could be a successful coach if he went to a club that had a sporting director or a technical director that picked the players for him? Yeah, I mean, I, he's a smart guy. He knows how to adapt the system. We went from all high press, right. you know, run for 90 and junk ball to like 
really beautiful football at times. But if Vermees is given the keys to the castle again at a different club, I don't think he would find success because his model right now is to find 28 year old, 29 year old guys to try and plug and play. And if you look like I all of our success, that that's his goal every time. I think that's what, what young, has happened. What, what young players have we brought in? Three U22 players. And they don't play. Okay, but that's not what you just asked. But he does, they don't play though. Like he's, he's bringing in guys overwhelmingly who are in their late 20s as plug and play starters. I, like I, we I need agree. a center back, is, so we're going to get a plug and play center back. He, that, is, that is what has happened, but I think that's a little bit of circumstances of like who you can get to come play here, who's available, and things like that. Well, I don't I, think it's his model. He I, wants to only sign 29-year-olds. I don't know that a young player would want to come play for him. Why would you? If you're Marino Janice, why would you ever want to come play for Peter Vermees when no matter how bad the attack is, when you've scored three goals in 10 games, you can't even get on the field. He didn't even get subbed in last night. Right. Felipe didn't even get subbed in, even though Roger was on a yellow for like, what, 45 minutes? Mm -hmm. why, if, why would a young player go play for him? What's the incentive? You'll never get a run out. And so, you know, the, the problem with firing Vermees, the coach, is that you also have to fire Vermees, the sporting director, heading into the summer window. Would, so who do you leave? The, you can't fire Vermees and Bliss because then who, who's going to do the scouting and the signing? I mean, you have to have a I real have plan. suggestions, but. You have to have a real plan <laughs> in place, right? It's easy to replace him as the coach and say, like, Benny's the interim for the rest of the season while we evaluate other candidates but then you still got Vermees, the sporting director, and sporting director is the one who got us into this mess to begin with. All right, so last night, my buddy and I, Terry, we had this whole discussion. Okay, so here's how I feel about the owners. This is my fear. And you guys last year were like, oh, what sporting owners know the sport? I'm sorry, guys who own baseball teams in America know baseball because they're Americans and they grew up with the game. Okay, soccer, I don't think it's that way. So here's what we think would happen. Sporting owners would fire Peter as technical director and head coach, but then keep him as a consultant to see who they should hire next because they don't know. Here's where I'm at with Peter Vermees. <laughs> Actually, when they started, when they bought the Wizards, they got Vermees to help, but they also got other people like Bruce Arena. And that's yeah. how we ended up with Anafo because he was a Bruce Arena disciple. But Yeah, we won't talk about that. <laughs> I just hate the situation that we're in. Thad, I'm with you on on that there are a lot of positives to Peter Vermees. There are. It's just, I, I hate that we're in the circumstance that, you know, we lose, we take a gamble on a DP striker for a lot of money. He goes out for a year. And then at the same time, another, the other second most expensive player gets hurt at the same time. It just sucks that we're, I don't disagree that he need that he might be fired or the potential of him being fired. I just hate that we're in this situation that we might lose this, you know, almost legendary American soccer mind that yep. has had wild success here against odds just because we had these two terrible injuries. You know, Cody, we've been doing top five lists. We could do a top 10 list of worst injuries that have sabotaged sporting over the past five years. We could do that list. Right, so then yeah. why are we blaming Peter for me? <laughs> like, you see what I'm saying? I, again, I understand the the fans chanting in the in the cauldron. If the players stop playing for him, you gotta go. Yeah, I understand. Like, there, there. Oh. He he bears a lot of responsibility. I just it sucks that it's like we would just because of the circumstances that we're in in our club at the moment that we got to get rid of him because a good coach would adapt. Okay, we, no matter what, no matter what, we run out with the exact same game plan every game. We're going to possess. We're going to play a high line. We're going to play the ball out to the wings. At no point last year, and you can go back and listen to the pods last year where I was saying, just bunker. I'll but, argue with the high line thing. But, but, yeah. but put everybody behind the ball because our defense is slow and we keep getting caught out in transition. I, I just, I'm not sure you want to bring up last year about why... I, wasn't working because everything did turn around and did work for the last sure, 10 but, games. No, but the issue was we had these two players who were hurt. So continuing to run out the exact same thing, like continuing to play like you have Polito when you don't have Polito and you've and, got Vojnjevic playing. But it ended up with them dominating the league after for we brought two in, plus months. After we brought in two new players, right? 
But again, this year, so then he what started doing, this season doing the same thing that was working for ten games, right? I, and it's clearly not working, and he's not adapting. Well, and that's now, the issue. now we're but now we're getting back those players. But you see this a lot of times with a lot of coaches, Jose Mourinho, Antonio Conte. You see guys who are like, "This is my system. I play my system. My system works." And yeah, your system can work, but when you don't have the players to fit your system, and when your system isn't working, good coaches know how to adapt. Hey, even Pep went away from the single pivot. I mean, come on. You have to adapt to how your team is playing and who's available. And if you don't have a six, if you don't have an elite six, you have to adapt and you have to create a system that helps shield the back line. If you're running out a USL center back, you can't play the same way that you do when you had peak Beasler and peak Fontes or peak Opara. You just can't. I do feel like he adapted more in the early years than he has in the last couple. Um, just the bigger tactics again they they adapt my the smaller tactics within a game for every game but the bigger tactics i feel like they haven't done it as much and i'm going to kick back a little bit on last year's end run yeah maybe this is the way success is in mls you beat up on the lesser teams and you draw even with the good teams because we were two two and one against playoff teams which isn't great so that's my argument against our last run at the end of the season was so great. Yeah. Two, two, and one against playoff teams is pretty darn good considering right. how bad they were earlier in the year. So right, uh, yeah, right. But still, they weren't great against those teams. But like, and their goal differential was terrible in those games. But you see it in every sport. You have elite coaches, but at a certain point, their time comes. That's just how it is. You know, and, and sometimes was, it's just because the voice needs to change. It's not because they're they're a bad coach. It's not because the tactics are wrong. Sometimes it's unlucky and it's unfair. Right, and that's and, what the, exactly unlucky and unfair, and that's where I'm at right now. That it's like if, okay, he gets fired, and then some other team is going to get this brilliant MLS mind that knows how to navigate the rules and all this, and he's going to go help their club. Probably San Diego loyal, <laughs> but like, actually a really good shout. When was the last time we had a fun manipulation of the rules to get a Hungarian homegrown? I mean. Even that is, you know, <laughs> but but our our the club has problems to the deepest core. You know, Vermees talked for so long about wanting to build out an academy that could and build out a, a, an academy so good that we could run out eleven homegrowns. But we're not bringing homegrown talent through the pipeline. We've signed homegrowns, okay. But of the homegrowns that we've signed, we signed what six? I think in 2021, only three are left with the club: Caden Pierre, Jake Davis. Uh, I can't remember who the last one was. And none of them play. Yeah, Ozzy Cisneros. Ozzy Cisneros. So Cisneros, Davis, and Pierre are the only three that are left. And they don't play. Right? There's Which more than grown- three. You forgot Felipe. Duke. Who wasn't signed that same year. Oh, okay. I'm talking about that class. Okay, we signed gotcha. six in that class. Gotcha. But which of our homegrowns consistently play? Shallowy and Felipe. Right? And like Pools Camp, kind of. But barely an academy guy. Right, not like, an academy, not academy guy. guy, right? Didn't we no, buy him he's an LA place? academy guy right. who right. bought the homegrown rights too. Right, so, happily so, because I like Pulse Camp. Yeah, I do too, but the ideas just aren't working. We're not bringing people through the two team. Like we had this whole pro player pathway thing that we talk about, where you start with the academy, you go to the twos, you come up to the to the first team, and other than Felipe, nobody's done that. David, you're gonna love my article coming up this week. I bet I will. All right. <laughs> I think we should probably just break. Yes. We're going to limp into a break here. One more break, and then we're going to talk about... We're going to bring it back to the state of the cauldron, which is not good. So we'll be right back. Reboot your credit card with Apple Card, the credit card created by Apple. It gives you unlimited daily cash back that you can now choose to grow in a high-yield savings account that's built right into the wallet app. Apply for Apple Card now in the Wallet app on iPhone and start growing your daily cash with savings today. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility requirements. Savings accounts provided by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. All right. Back again. Last segment here. I wanted to talk about the cauldron. We had a pod in the preseason about the state of the cauldron where we talked to Zachary Cobb. And we talked to, we tried to get it the word out on our on these issues. Not that I thought a revolution was going to be sparked, but <laughs> no, uh, the, the same problems are still there. And Zach uh, made a tweet thread last night, um, kind of calling out the leadership, which has been silent 
among fans being wildly upset. At some point, the voice of the fan group needs to tell the club that this is unacceptable. We've talked about the lack of life and vibrance and fan engagement for the last couple of years, the lack of anything new, lack of youth in there. So there are a lot of issues with with the cauldron. I was there last night, and it was genuinely the saddest I have ever seen it. I think a lot of people in the cauldron have a feel a sense of like personal responsibility to be the fans that don't give up on the team. And so I think for most of even this season, while there's been a Vermees out sign in the, in the cauldron before and unhappy people, I think the general vibe of the cauldron was still, we love you, we love you, where you go, we'll follow. And I did not get that at all last night. I, I happened to be like right behind the drummers and the five people with drumsticks were the only five people in the entire cauldron that had any sort of life or cared about it in any way. And yes, and then there was obviously the um, the chant. And then one of the, um, one guy in particular is getting dragged pretty hard for <laughs> taking offense to this chant. And he made an effort to run over there. It looked like some stuff was going to start. And it was just all of this combined was truly just a, a a new low point for me, for the club, for the cauldron. And it really brought me down. I will never forget the first time I ever sat in the cauldron and the, everything that was going on last night, the silence, just zero life from anyone. It, uh, it just really put a lot into perspective of where we're at right now. Well, even on the broadcast, Lloyd Sam, Lloyd Sam is his name. I looked it up. It is not Sam <laughs> Lloyd. I don't right. know. Two first names. It's very confusing. But he even was talking about how the supporters had no energy, no life. And he's said, like, you know, as a player, you need that. You need to hear them get loud. It will help encourage you. It will help move you forward. And it's lifeless. You know, and, and I've seen a lot of the debates on Cauldron Facebook and on Cauldron Twitter. And I don't go to Reddit because it's the most toxic place on earth. But, you know, there's a, it's a tough balancing act where you want to support the players, but you want to express your displeasure to the club. And so there's a lot of talks of what does that look like? Is it a walkout? Is it just being silent? And the reality is, you know, in an effort to, to send a message to ownership, it is going to negatively affect the players. But as long as it doesn't get extremely toxic, I think you have to do whatever you have to do being a supporter of the club means doing what's right for the club, supporting the long term. Right. That's health the of dilemma, the club. right? It's right. like, you know, where, where does the, where does the line come where you're not supporting the team or you're a bad fan for being fed up with them versus you love the team so much that you can't let this continue to happen to your club. What's the line between being rational and being reactive? You know, you've got to have reasons that you feel the way you do. You just can't go off. Well, yeah, I, but it, it was it was sad, sad, lifeless, and uh, very hostile. The, the the loudest anyone got was to chant uh, Vermees out or to yell at the guy that was crawling, the drunk guy crawling over fans, who is apparently, uh, we're talking about the cauldron leadership. This guy is apparently in the cauldron leadership, which is uh, not a good sign. Well, you know, and we've had people in, in the comments on our site talk about they hope that we keep losing because it will force Vermees out. And, you know, you're not wrong. That's, that's definitely an opinion. And you're not wrong for thinking that. I can't bring myself to ever root for us to lose games. Yeah. I want to win no matter what. Um, but I understand why people feel that way. You're not wrong for feeling that way. You know, again, I ever, you know, I'm a Tottenham fan that there's been a lot of really toxic abuse spewed at the players who, because Tottenham's also having a not great season and they booed a player off the pitch, embarrassingly so, you know, and he was sitting on the bench crying essentially with his, trying to hide 
from the fans because it was so negative. Players have been deleting social media because of how much abuse they're getting from their own fans. And, you know, guys can play poorly and they deserve some stick for it. But as long as, you know, the cauldron and the fans don't get that toxic, if you want to be silent, be silent. If you don't want to buy merch, don't buy merch. Like I, I'm still going to games. I paid for season tickets. They already have my money. So there's no sort of like fan protest that I can have short of I'm not spending money on merch. I'm not spending money on concessions because that's the only way that I can ex- to tell the like ownership that I'm finding this product to be unacceptable. Speaking of Tottenham, how about that game today? You're an asshole. <laughs> I was going to not swear on this podcast. If you if you notice, I made it this entire time without cursing, and you're an asshole. No, I have. To, I just wanted to say because, like I like I was saying, I was I was down. It was last night was rough for my soccer fandom, and then I woke up and and watched Man City go top of the table, and then was reminded of why football is life from this from the Liverpool Tottenham game, two goals scored in in stoppage time. I was just like, oh, yeah, that's why. That's why I follow this sport. That's why I do it to myself. Spoiler alert. And I thought, man, am I glad I'm not a Tottenham fan. That must suck to be a Tottenham fan right now. I hope you stub your toe. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, so, Thad, do you have anything on – what are your feelings on the the cauldron? Do you have a a take you want to give on that? I guess my my thing I would like to say, because you don't look ready, I'm sorry. Uh, I would just like to say – if you have ideas and if you do, if you agree that there is an issue there, I imagine, at least this is the way it always was, I imagine those in charge would tell you, then do it. Then come do all of these things you want to do. If you have ideas, come to the call and if you want to help with the drums, come do it. I think you would be encouraged. So, and, and that is also the problem with having this conversation is that if if you want to complain about the cauldron and that they're not doing enough, the com- people the people you're complaining about are the pe- only people who are doing something. They're the people that are doing the most are the people you have to complain to about it. So if you're one of these people that is angry about the way things are going, go get involved. Send them a message. Go help with the TIFO. Go put your face there, and then you can get elected to the, uh, the leadership of it and actually make things change. So if you want... Fan culture to come back in KC, go do it. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of things that I need to say now, but you, a sporting Kansas City fan, making fun of a Tottenham, which is in sixth place in the EPL, the oh. biggest and best league in the world. Oh, did you get the irony place. there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's still been a pretty bad Thank year. Thank you guys. for pointing that out if the listeners didn't get it. We're our third manager this year. Yikes. Mm hmm. Oh, so managers, when they don't meet expectations, don't keep the job? Correct. In this conversation... There's a lot of managers in EPL that get fired way too quickly, though. <laughs> in this conversation, I, uh, I have the greatest coach in the world, and my team is going to win in trouble. So this is a good part of a conversation for me. Yeah, bandwagon jumper. Okay, um, tell us anyway, your thoughts. I find it difficult to criticize the Cauldron for not joining in a Vermees out thing because you and I have been hesitant to say Vermees out for a long time. And I, most people on this pod have been hesitant to say it. We may have thought that it needed to happen or it was coming or any of this type of stuff, but we've been very hesitant to say it. It's, I don't blame the Cauldron for not having an organized Vermees out chant or something else for doing that. That's, it's a, it's like a turning point where you have to, you have to completely commit. And if, if that's 50, 50 cauldron membership or people standing in the cauldron, what Vermees out versus don't want to go that direction. Now you, whichever direction you go, well, you alienate one or the other. I'm group. not, I, I, yeah. If that's what it sounded like, I wasn't asking well, that they do, that they lead a chant like that or that they should no, have been but involved or that was a problem. I'm not even, I'm, I'm not saying that you're saying that, but I think a lot of people think that, right? right. Uh and we love Zach Cobb and I know he called out the Cauldron leadership for needing to be more vocal. And I, I yeah. agree that they could be more vocal about, you know, something, something, but let's say something, but again, what that is, because there's a really wide spectrum of what that is. And I don't know what the right answer for any of that is. is I don't know. Post a, a type out a note on your phone and post it on Twitter that says, 
we're not happy. We don't like the way things are going. Like, literally, it can say that little. Like, it can say nothing, but, like, do something that the official ultras of the club are saying, this ain't right. Do you think the culture has enough cachet to say, hey, we'd like to have a sit down with Jake Reed or whoever is best to sit down with and voice our complaints? Do you think they have enough cachet to get that? Yeah. I mean, that seems like, yes, of course they do. But if they don't, then that's also part of the problem of what's going on here. They used to. Yeah. I don't know that they still do. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not trying to criticize anybody specifically. I just don't know that that relationship has been kept up the same way or been as passionate or as in force. Right. And that's probably a little bit at fault on both sides. Probably. Again, I, I, I... I'm, I try to stay out of the cauldron business, quite honestly, because I try to be objective about how I report things. I'm a fan also, but I try to stay out of their business too much. But just from the outside looking in, they have been less passionate, less everything for a while now, and I don't blame that on Vermese. It is a shell of its former self, and it's very sad. But also, if you're uh, if you're a group looking to exert influence over the organization, simply writing out a note and saying, like, we're not happy isn't enough, right? I agree. Because yeah. nothing will change until there's actual, I mean, it has to actually hurt the club for them to want to make a difference. And so, you know, people have been talking about, like, a boycott. Like, let's just not go to games. Well, or, like, we're, let's stand up and leave. You know, a couple, few games ago, a month ago, I might have, I, I couldn't have imagined that it would, like, get there. But, like, shit, yeah, we're a few games away here of no more goals and or and nothing positive that it's, like, Shit, yeah, like the 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 team has let us down entirely, and a boycott might like, you, entirely make sense. Do you think the leadership of the team doesn't know that there's a problem? I mean, it, no, they absolutely do. They, okay, I think they do. You so, know. and I'm, I'm not saying you can't do these other things to make your voice heard, but if you're doing it, what is the what is the goal? What is the end result of this this action that you take? Uh, is it to make sure the the ownership knows that you're pissed off? Well, I think they know. I think it's to shorten the leash. Right. You, you know, we talked about how Vermees has this long leash. If fans stop coming, if they stop selling tickets, if they stop selling concessions, if they stop selling merch, that leash gets a lot shorter. Because at the end of the day, it's still a business. And so when the team stops making money and they lose all support, you, you almost force their hand into action. And I think then a lot of people would come back. Like, you know, we're not coming to games till Vermees gets let go. And then we'll give the new manager that bounce. Like, we appoint Benny, and everybody's like, okay, we loved Benny. Let's see if anything gets better. Um, and we can at least see it out through the end of the year. So I think that's the only the benefit is it, it the more pressure you put on the ownership group to make a change, the, sh- the sooner you get your change, rather than them letting – if everybody shows up, if nothing changes with how the fans interact with the club, they can be like, well, we'll just see out the season. Maybe we'll turn it around. Maybe we'll turn it around. And the playoffs are so big – that there is time to sneak into a playoff spot. They can, as long as they're mathematically in it, the club can be like, well, you know, the right. results did get bad, you know. So it's just how much pressure do think, you want to put on? I think that leash was last year when, ah, the results did get better and they almost snuck into the playoffs. Yeah, I'm telling you. That ten ten the, games in now is not that. That 10-game ten, ten stretch to wrap up last season might have put this organization in a hole for the next <laughs> five years. No, he won't last five. Well, I don't even mean uh, – even if he doesn't, it's like they, they still have to fire him now after all of this time and then start to rebuild. And Yeah. Yeah. Okay, quick, quickly educate me here. Is there precedence where a fan show of just, you know, we're not happy has made a difference? Oh, in, yeah. In MLS? In the world, yes. Okay. In MLS, I'm not as sure. I mean, they but have then you can, been protests. And you can argue that it's like, was it because of the fan protest or the team knew something was <laughs> obviously bad yeah. all along? I don't know. The fan, the fans can yell and all that, but again, it's I'm looking at the, uh, like, if the players, um, if he loses the locker room is right. what I'm keeping my eye on. Right. And I hadn't thought, the first time the thought even crossed my mind was last, was night. last night, which is scary for these next couple of games. That was and that was my other thing that I said before that you would have to fire him if he lost the locker room and 
I, I, th- I thought it was a long way off. And then just seeing the body language last night, I was like, well, Jesus, they, yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I, if they could come out next week and respond and they, ha- I, I personally believe they have the talent on the team to be a decent team or a they good do. team. Even I'm not saying they there would be MLS cup winners, but they could be a good team. It's just, they're not, and they're not doing it. And that's, you can say tactics. It can say motivation. You can say bad luck, bad injury timing, whatever, but it's just not. And sometimes that has to change. And I, I will be sad if Ramiz is fired. I will. I mean, I, oh, yeah, me too. I'm not like yeah. his best buddy or anything because I'm not. I mean, don't go hang out with him. But it is just a, it would be because it would be the end of a of an era that's been successful. That's been, you know, probably my favorite ten years of or ten plus years now of being a fan of Kansas City soccer. But sometimes those have to change. No, very few coaches just retire. That's top. yeah, that's true. Very few, and even the, even the ones you can say did they didn't really completely go out on top. Sir Alex Ferguson, I mean, they were they were on a downhill at that point. They were just still better than most. You either die a hero, or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I've done that a couple times. <laughs> it's better to rust than to fade away, Neil Young. Okay, Robert had to. One up my quote there, but okay. <laughs> well, that's why he's more prophetic than you. You still have the hair, though. Okay, you guys work on your top five lists. Everyone, everyone was teasing their own. Did I so what work was on your top five list? I don't know. Oh, fights. Oh yeah, fighters. Training fighters. That was what it was. I, while making this one, I came up. I, I want to do another one. That's names that make you go. Hmm. <laughs> and I also have a. I hope a hopefully fun trivia game to play with you guys. Oh yes, I'm hearing about this trivia game. You but, won't tell us anything about it. Well, this is a second. I have two trivia games, but this one's more player focused. Okay. I just don't think we have time to do it today, and it's too somber to do it. We're today. well over an hour. So today. let's let's maybe do it midweek. Let's have a fun one midweek. We go when the team is really bad. We go long, and and our listens are up too. I don't. know. Everyone likes to just sit in our own grief. Top five. Media game goals. I like. That I know list. what my number one is. I Cody, like cue list. it, Cody. It was offside. <laughs> Damn it. See, I'm doing too many things. Filibuster while I get there. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> 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 if he scores again in a media game this year, oh my god. <laughs> Cody, I'm feeding you in the media game this year. I'm I'm only passing to you. Wait a minute. You went from wanting to take him out to feeding him. See, Dave is well, disappointed. Well, now it's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sporting. Anything to shake this foot I'm in My foot buttings got me drinking My foot buttings got me drinking My foot buttings got me drinking